Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we are going to discuss Sobek, a god depicted as either a crocodile or as a man with the head of a crocodile. Infamously known for snatching women from their husbands whenever the mood struck him, he was the god of water, especially the waters of the Nile, of riverbanks and marshlands, the patron of fishermen, and depending on the version, either a force for order or for chaos. Alright, let's get into it. Sobek, whose name means crocodile, was worshipped from at least as far back as the Old Kingdom, a period that began nearly 5,000 years ago, and he was revered for his power, the locus of which was rooted in, among other aspects, common crocodile haunts. The pyramid text shown to be the son of Neith, a creator goddess who embodied the primordial waters of Noon, who was extolled with names like the Great Mother and the Terrifying One. In these same texts, Sobek was called the Raging One who takes women from their husbands whenever he wishes according to his desire. His consort, depending on the source, was either Rena Nutet, the Harvest Goddess, or Hathor, Goddess of Women, the Sky, Love, and Fertility. In some places, such as Crocodilopolis, somewhere we'll cover in greater detail later on in the video, Sobek was worshipped as the great male god who emerged from the primordial waters. He was most feared and most venerated where people had to be wary of crocodiles. Moreover, he became the patron god of fishermen, who worked on his waters and had to contend with his great lurking predators on a daily basis. So fishermen invoked him for protection and prosperity. One story in the coffin texts, which are a collection of religious writings such as spells and incantations, inscribed into coffins to help the dead negotiate the journey through the underworld, tells of how Horus's hands were thrown into the Nile after Isis cut them off. Ra dispatched Sobek, tasking him with retrieving Horus's hands, but the task proved more challenging than cursory consideration would lead one to believe. So Sobek was unable to carry out his duty until he invented fish, whom he subsequently instructed to set out to seek and salvage the hands for him. Because a great many fish were considered creatures of chaos, Sobek, by virtue of feeding on fish, was seen as a force endeavoring to establish and maintain order, but he wasn't always viewed as such. Some sources portray Sobek as an agent of chaos and destruction, one working towards the dissolution of divine order. In one spell counted among the coffin texts, Sobek is given the epithet, the rebel, and the blame for mutilating the body of Osiris is laid at his feet. And in that same vein, he's associated with the crocodile characterization of Set, the god who murdered and dismembered Osiris, his own brother. Additionally, Sobek was connected to nature in many ways. Places where crocodiles dwelt were associated with him. So he was the god of riverbanks, of marshes, particularly those interspersed between the lush lands of the Nile and the arid desolation of the desert, and of water, especially of the great waterway of the Nile and its myriad tributaries, all of which were said to have accumulated from his sweat. Green plants that grow in fields and on river banks, particularly the two banks that bordered either side of the Nile, were given life by him, linking him with procreation and with plant propagation and proliferation. Furthermore, Baku, the mythical mountain that loomed in the eastern horizon, was where Sobek's abode was located. He lived in a temple fashioned of carnelian, which is a semi-precious stone with red and orange coloring. Syncretism, meaning, in a religious or mythological context, the fusing of multiple points of belief into a single incorporated point, was ubiquitous throughout ancient Egypt, so it was common for various gods to be combined, merging them, usually two, into amalgamated entities. Sobek was integrated with the cults of a diverse assortment of other gods, including Osiris, Amun, and especially Ra, the two of them compounding into Sobek Ra, because of Sobek's association with Ra, he became regarded as an aspect of the creator's sun god, which was why the Greeks equated him with Helios, their own sun god. It could also be that he became a representation of pharaonic power through his association with other preeminent gods, such as the three just listed, all of them maintaining high-ranking positions in the hierarchy of ancient Egypt's pantheon. In appearance, there are two forms in which Sobek is depicted either as fully zoomorphic or as partly zoomorphic and partly anthropomorphic. When fully zoomorphic, he's portrayed as a crocodile, and when partly zoomorphic and partly anthropomorphic, his hybrid form, he's portrayed with the body of a man and the head of a crocodile. 
whether he's in animal form or in his hybrid form, a headdress decorated with horns, a sun disc, and two tall plumes often surmounted his head. The color green is strongly associated with him, a fact attested to by numerous textual sources referring to him as green of plume. Many artifacts honoring Sobek have been recovered from the remnants of ancient Egypt that have survived through to today, but perhaps the most famous piece recovered harkens back to the strong connection Sobek once had with the pharaoh. It's a statue of Amenophis III, standing next to a seated Sobek, the god's head adorned by the aforementioned headdress. Finally, we are going to close out this video by looking at when Sobek's cult existed. Also known as the Age of the Pyramid Builders, it was during this time that the art of pyramid building was perfected and the pyramids of Giza were raised. The Old Kingdom of Egypt was a period that lasted from the early 27th to the late 22nd century BC. Virtually all the information that historians and archaeologists have gleaned and pieced together from this period is carved in stone. There is evidence of worship paid to Sobek going as far back as the Old Kingdom, then continuing for thousands of years through to the hegemony of the Roman Empire. Of all that time, a span encompassing thousands of years, it is thought that Sobek's peak prominence was during the Middle Kingdom, a notion lent support by the names of several pharaohs during the 12th and 13th dynasties, such as Sobekotep, meaning Sobek is satisfied, and Sobek Neferu, meaning beautiful of Sobek. The Middle Kingdom lasted from the mid-21st century to the late 18th century BC, and over its course, some of the greatest accomplishments of ancient Egypt in art and literature were achieved. Religious sites dedicated to Sobek were prevalent. However, the two foremost cult centers devoted to him were located in ancient Shedet, later called Crocodilopolis by the Greeks. Sacred pools filled with crocodiles were a feature common to Sobek's temples, and these crocodiles were mummified when they died becoming sacred relics. Amulets emblazoned with crocodiles were regularly worn for their apotropaic power, as it was thought they were strong symbols for warding off evil. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.